Hey YouTube, welcome back to Heiko's Garage. Yeah. Today we are swapping out the movement in my recently acquired Steel Dive SD1958V. You might be asking, why is he already switching out the movement in there? As a lot of you guys probably know, that if you buy a AliExpress special dive watch or other watch, doesn't matter, that contains an NH35A, which is a non-branded Seiko movement that is used in a lot of those uh, cheaper dive watches of, of AliExpress or even in other micro brands, that an NH35A movement usually has a date complication. Here in this case, the SD1958 or 1958V does not have a date window. And so I was wondering if they put an NH35A in there that actually has uh, two crown positions for setting, one for the time and the other one for the date, if the date complication is still installed on this movement. So what we're doing today is we're yanking out the NH35A and we're putting in an NH38A, which is uh, part of the same NH family of movements that Seiko puts out. There are quite a few different ones. So NH35A is with a date complication. NH36A is a day date complication. NH38A doesn't have any of this. And so we're swapping out the NH35A with a date complication for an NH38A that doesn't have a date complication. That will get rid of the one crown position that here in this case, in this watch case and this dial combination actually has no function. And at the same time, we're gonna find out if all the bits and pieces for the actual date complication are still installed on this movement. I'm not sure. Uh, I couldn't find that online. I know the 35A is a date complication movement, but maybe in the factory in China, they yank the date wheel off or they take uh, the parts that are not used off of that movement. So um, I bought a $27 NH38A off of AliExpress and now we're going to swap it out. So we already got the NH35A movement including dial and hands out of the case now we just have to um, figure out how the dial is held on this movement uh, i then will find out that uh, it's just push pins they push into this little plastic ring that you see on the outside of the movement there i'm just staring at it trying to figure it out and then we're going to take the hands off eventually I've noticed that uh, the case and this little spacer ring that's between the crystal and the dial has already rubbed off some of the paint of the dial, which is not visible when it's, uh, when it's in the case, so it's no problem. But um, yeah, I really wanted to know if this NH35 in there is actually complete and still has the date wheel and everything on it. And if that's the case, and me swapping it out for an NH38A, if that actually fits, if the crown is maybe too long or the, the stem is too long, or if it will fit right in and, and swap right over. And if that is the case, then uh, we will have an extra movement, which we can turn into another watch maybe. So I can maybe buy myself another a case and a dial and a set of hands and then put something together that actually utilizes the date complication. So here I'm trying out my new hand levers and then I realized they are way too fat down there. They are kind of thick metal. They don't fit under the hour hand. So then I throw those aside and grab my trusty Timelab branded hand levers. I wanted uh, some hand levers that have a little bit more surface area where the, the pedal at the bottom is a little wider, so you are not putting pressure on such a tiny little spot on your dial. 
You can see that I'm also using a version branded uh, dial protector. It just needs to be something, use a plastic bag really, honestly. It just needs to be something that's between the dial and your hand levers. And it's terrible as you can see my hair sticking into the picture there, sorry about that. So the hands are off, let's put those safely to the side. And then we're getting really close, finding out if there is a date complication. Maybe you guys are more advanced in your modding of watches that you already know that kind of stuff. But I thought that was pretty uh, curious. I wanted to know, do they just, you know, buy 10,000 NH35s? They could, they could just buy a few NH38s and whenever they create a watch that doesn't have a date complication, just use a non-date NH movement. I just don't quite understand. I mean, it's literally the same movement without the date complication. I have no idea why those Chinese brands, San Martin or San Martin, uh, Steel Dive, Kronos, uh, Pagani Design, they all do that. They have watches with no date complication visible, but they still use an NH35. So you will always end up having this one setting position on your crown that has no function, which is bothering me. Oh, there you go. There you go. There's a date wheel on it. So there is a full functioning date complication underneath the dial, which you cannot see. You cannot set, not use. And there it comes, my $27 AliExpress NH38A. Um, there is a pretty good um, list somewhere on a web page where uh, it explains all the differences between all those different NH. There are quite a few variations in the NH movement family. Let us take a look at this web page here. NH35A is three hand plus date, NH36A, three hand date and day, NH37A is three hand plus date plus 24 hour dial, NH38A, the one we're installing is just a three hander, NH39A is a three hander plus the 24 hour dial, and then the NH70A is a three-hander with a skeletonized look. All right, and now we are going to be working on putting the NH38A here in front of us together with my dial and the hands and put it back in the case. And then we will see if the length of the stem is gonna be the same, if we can still uh, screw down the crown and all that, and if the setting functions properly. Uh, so this is just reassembly with a different movement. As you can see, instead of the um, date complication with a date wheel, it just has a shiny plate up there. That's now going to be disappearing underneath the dial. And uh, it's just push pins. They go into plastic. They are just held in place by friction. By now, I have figured out how to take the stem and the crown out of this type of movement. There's a little push lever on the side and then uh, you just pull on it. It's pretty easy. And um, yeah, no rocket science. So now I know how that all works and uh, confusion and excitement. I completely spaced the alignment of my hands. I, I just slapped them on there and didn't really pay attention to have uh, the hour hand actually pointing at the hour and then have the minute end point at the 12 o'clock position. Um, so yeah, that means that later off camera, I had to take it apart one more time to get the alignment of my hands correctly. Also putting hands on with those hand pushers is quite difficult to get them all straight. So you want the hand to be parallel to the surface of the dial. And you don't want the hands to interfere with each other. So look at what I'm doing now. It's pointing at 11 o'clock and my minute hand is just going somewhere. It's, I don't know why that didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> Later the day, 
I had the watch on my wrist and I was like, what is going on here? What's the time showing? So yeah, for the most part, I'm, I'm spending time to look at uh, the hands being parallel to the surface of the dial and not fouling each other, not interfering with each other. And then getting the second hand on the little sick, second pinion is just brutal. That little thing is so tiny. I always run them over top of each other and then look at it, uh, look at the hands and the dial. But yeah, absolutely did not cross my mind that I have to line up the hour hand and the minute hand with a proper position. Uh, most people do it, either put the hour hand at the 12 and then put the minute hand also at 12, or some people do hour hand pointing at 6 o'clock and then the minute hand at 12 o'clock and now the second hand. And that thing is so tiny, even with my thin tweezers there, constantly flops over. And until I finally got it on there, and I don't really have particularly shaky hands, but it still took me a little while to get that on there. But you guys know, you guys are into watch modding and watch repair, or else you wouldn't be watching this video. All right, Heiko, get it together now. It's kind of funny, every time I start recording a voiceover, my German Shepherd decides to walk by. It's just like clockwork. I don't know if you can hear his step steps on the hard flooring behind me. Makes me nervous just watching this. I don't know about you guys, but it's uh, not easy. Some people use Rodico to hold a hand. I haven't quite figured out how to do this properly to make it look professional. And there we go. Finally, second hand is on there. Again, making sure that nothing touches e each other. And then uh, I noticed that the second hand is kind of low at the tip. So you can manipulate that a little bit. So and now the difficult part was um, to hold the movement in my hand to push the little stem release lever and pull the stem out because this is the one that came with that new movement with a plastic crown on it. Of course, we don't want to leave that in there. So there you go. Maybe not. And my hair is in the screen again. Come on, Heiko. There you go. So that's out. Then, um, of course, we got to make sure we don't have any dust on the dial, nor in the case. Here comes the puffer. And there it is in. 
I'm still manipulating it with my fingers to slide it around. Um, you have to put the side where the, the tube is pressed into the case where the uh, stem is going to go through first, kind of slide it under, and then the rest of the movement will follow. And then you can see that there is the movement retainer ring sitting there next to the case cushion. Do a little bit more puffing, get all the dust out of the way. And then uh, I'm sticking in the stem and the crown just to make sure the movement is fully lined up. That's the case, so that's good. Taking a look at it, yeah, it looks good. Screwing in the crown, I guess. So then I put the movement retainer in and the gasket. I gave the gasket a little bit of some silicone grease uh, just to make it slightly tacky and then it stays in that groove. I was struggling to put the case back back on. It's really fine thread and you don't want to cross thread that at all. It was difficult to get it started, but once I had it started, um, I tightened it down with my rubber ball. Uh, that's actually how it came from the factory. So I was able to open up this uh, case back without any tools and just by using my sticky rubber ball. I have uh, quite a few of those uh, Rolex type case openers in different sizes and one that's really close, but it will not interface with the steel dive case back. So I don't know what they are using to open and close case backs, but uh, my Rolex case openers do not work. And then after I was able to close the case back and tighten it down with my green rubber ball, uh, I was uh, experimenting with a setting position, making sure the stem isn't too long and uh, making sure that the crown would still screw down properly. You're going to see that here in a second. So since this is now a movement that has no date complication, we really only have one setting position. So here you can see me pull it out. Uh, now I'm bothered by some smudges on the crystal, which I'm going to polish out here real quick. Make it clean just for you guys. So here we go. Uh, see the second hand still running. It's in the hand wind position. Now it's in the setting position and the second hand stops moving. So it's still hacking. You can still hand wind it. That's good. And then the biggest test was, does it still screw down all the way? And it did. And the movement runs. So this is now Steel Dive SD1958V with a proper no frills three-hand movement NH38A. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Support the channel, please. That's, that's all I'm asking. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye. Thank you.